And Jonathan, thank you. Meanwhile, earlier this week, the Congressional Black Caucus caught a lot of heat after taking to the House floor on Monday night to address the grand jury decision in Ferguson, with several members repeatedly referencing, hands up, don't shoot. Watch this. Hands up. Don't shoot. Hands up. Don't shoot. Hands up. Don't shoot. To all Americans who are disturbed by the demonstrations that are taking place across this nation, I want you to remember these four words. No justice, no peace. These demonstrations uh, show that this issue of detention and stopping of black men, especially black men in the streets, has been simmering below the surface. Joining me now, CBC member, Congresswoman Eleanor Holmes uh, Norton. Uh, you say the issue of, you know, detention and stopping black men in the street. You are, did you read the, the evidence that was released in this case? I did not, and that is not a concern. That's, the, the evidence uh, the, isn't a concern? For me, for me, for me, out of, for me, out of this tragedy, now Eric Garner, has come a much larger concern and a much larger picture. You sp these are and words that, that you're saying. You, the, have, that has to, you have a position of power. You're saying that the evidence in the case, that the reason, yeah, the reason that Michael something. Brown was stopped was because the police officer had a report of a robbery and Michael Brown fit the description, of the, and he turned out to be the guy, of the guy in the robbery. That was in the evidence that you say you won't take the time to read. Why? Uh, I'm sorry. If you want to talk about something that other people said, you can. This is my view. Witnesses? My view is that wherever you stand on whether it's racism, or whether, whether who struck John, we are losing the big picture. And the big picture, and the reason I think young people are in the streets, is because of the stops. Uh, the stops on the street for people who happen to be black so often that it has become routine. This is an opportunity for a conversation between police departments and their own communities. And that is what I am hoping come out of this. Not well, well, more who struck John in, in the evidence. It's interesting. That's it's for you. Fascinating. That's for the pundits. That's not where I am. And if you invited it's fascinating me on to, me. to talk about where other people stand, then you're not going to get that. It's where fascinating I stand to me, we ought to be discussing. We ought to be using this as an opportunity to discuss how police and African Americans in our communities across the United States can begin a conversation that we've been needing to have for But your decades colleagues, now. Congresswoman, have when gone out there. Excuse me, I, do not I am talking about colleagues. what happened on the House floor. They went out there with a narrative that is proven false. If you took the I time, will not can speak I finish for my any, question? I went out there as well, and I spoke for with myself. With hands up, if don't, you want to ask me what I said. Are you going to listen to my question, or are you going to speak over no, me? No, I'm going to tell you, you what I said, and I'm willing to talk about what okay. I said. If you want to talk about what they said, you have them on your program. All right, let me explain to you what the grand jury heard, because that's called evidence. In a case, let me put up on the screen what uh, what juror number witness number ten said. The police officer exited the vehicle with his weapon drawn, pursuing Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown was quite a distance, and he stopped. And when he stopped, he didn't get down on the ground or anything. He turned around and did some type of movement. I never seen him put his hands up or anything. I can't recall the moment that he did. I'm not sure if he pulled his pants up or whatever he did, but I saw some type of movement. Then he started charging towards the police officer. The police officer then returned fire, well, not returned fire, opened fire on Mr. Brown. Another person, another witness said that Michael Brown charged Officer Wilson like a football player with his head down, which would render the narrative, hands up, don't shoot, a lie. Why would, why would people in Congress, lawmakers, advance what is clearly, based on the evidence, a lie? You know, is your problem that you couldn't get any of them to come on to explain themselves? Because I didn't do any of that, and I didn't say any of that. But you sat the there. Did you say anything against it? The fact is that there was conflicting testimony. There was conflicting testimony. Some people are going off of the testimony you said. Some people are going over the other testimony. That's not my concern. My concern no? is to start a the conversation your concern? with police departments. Evidence if you isn't want your to concern? talk to people who have other concerns, have them on your show. Evidence isn't a concern. If, if you're going to take a position on 
Arizona case? In other words, if Michael Brown didn't rob I the store, lawyer, intimidate the clerk, the if he transcript. didn't fight for the gun and charge the officer. I have read the, the transcript because my interest is not in what, ha in what happened. My interest is in what should happen, where what we go happen. forward from here. That is my interest. Thank you very much. I have one last question. Is there a lesson to be learned that people shouldn't rob stores, intimidate clerks, fight for cops' guns, and charge at them like football players with their heads down? Is that a lesson to learn? That lesson gets taught every day, and I certainly hope everybody learns that there's a larger lesson here. Well, it's larger that than lesson that? Is, that lesson is between law enforcement and the communities they police. Let's get together. Let's figure out what we can do about this big issue in our country. All right, Congresswoman, I, I hope you'll take the time to read evidence in the case before you talk about a case. I think it would be helpful. I, I haven't talked about the case. I've talked about what we should ha do going forward, not about the case. Well, you talked That's about the quote, issue of the deliberate stopping of black men. You did That's talk about, about that as a result of the That's case. That's not about so the case. So maybe you should That's read the facts of this case. Men in the United States of America every day. That's Considering not about that the precipitated case, your remarks, that you may want to read the evidence. The case. So don't so, put what you want to put on me on me because I'll come right back at you. you can come Right back at me all you want. To say. Maybe you should read laws before you pass them, and maybe, maybe you should maybe read you about the case's evidence before, before you come in. You on. ask me questions. I know, but you talk about a case. You didn't read the evidence. I didn't talk about the case. I talked about the detention. Talked about the issue of, of detention and stopping of black men. That's what precipitated and that this discussion. Is a great lesson of what has happened in New York and what happened in Missouri. Well, that's exactly my point. The evidence is important. You should read it. Thank you, Congresswoman. Appreciate your time.